Welcome to AETCM. I am Dr. Tissa Paul from Amrita Institute of Medical Sciences. Today, I will talk about medical thoracoscopy. Thoracoscopy involves passage of an endoscope through the chest wall and offers clinician a window for direct visualization and collection of samples from the pleura. H.C. Jacobius, the Swedish internist, was the first one to perform thoracoscopy in 1910. Medical thoracoscopy or pleuroscopy is a minimally invasive procedure that allows access to the pleural space using a combination of viewing and working instruments. It also allows for basic diagnostic for undiagnosed pleural fluid or pleural thickening and it also helps in therapeutic procedures like pleurodosis to be performed safely. Medical thoracoscopy versus VATS. Medical thoracoscopy is usually done by a pulmonologist in an endoscopy suit. It is often under conscious sedation and not under GA like in VATS. During medical thoracoscopy, the patient will be taking spontaneous breaths and uh, the ports will be single or double, whereas in VATS it is multiple. The indications for medical thoracoscopy are usually for pleural biopsy, chest tube insertion, talc pleurosis, or deloculation, whereas in VATS it is for resection of pulmonary nodule, for bullectomy, lung biopsy or lobectomy, pneumonectomy, and pericardial window. Now over to the indications for medical thoracoscopy. The diagnostic indications are, as I told before, indeterminate uh, origin of pleural effusion, for staging of lung cancer with pleural effusion and of diffuse malignant mesothelioma, hormone receptor determination in breast cancer, culture in tuberculous pleurisy, in diagnosis for diffuse lung diseases and local chest wall or lung lesions. The therapeutic indications include for talc food rage in malignant and chronic and also in recurrent non-malignant pleural effusions. Talc food rage in pneumothorax is also done via uh, medical thoracoscopy. Paranemonic effusions and empyema, it is used for opening of loculations. Now the absolute contraindications for medical thoracoscopy. The lack of pleural space is an absolute contraindication like in advanced empyema, pleural thickening of unknown etiology, suspected mesothelioma where the visceral and parietal surfaces are fused and previous pleurodosis. Relative contraindications include inability to tolerate lateral decubitus position, unstable cardiovascular or hemodynamic status, the presence of severe uncorrectable hypoxemia despite oxygen therapy. In bleeding diathesis where platelet count uh, is less than 60,000 or the INR is more than 1.2, it is contraindicated. It is also contraindicated in pulmonary artery hypertension, refractory cough, drug hypersensitivity and reduced general health status with short suspected survival. These are the equipments used. Uh, one is rigid endoscopic instruments such as stainless steel trocars and telescopes as seen in the figure. And semi-rigid or semi-flexible pleuroscope is also often used. Now advantages of rigid thoracoscope. It enables us to take large biopsy sizes then biopsies from very dense lesions and when there is a requirement for a more elaborate procedure and when it is necessary to control hemorrhage after biopsy. It is less expensive, more robust and have a long endurance and may also need only less often of maintenance and repair. Advantages of a semi-rigid pleuroscope. It has the look and feel of a flexible bronchoscope and it allows concurrent suctioning. It overcomes the limitation uh, of maneuvering and it, it has a flexible tip. Its flexible tip facilitates the homogeneous insufflation of talc via a catheter. Phases of medical thoracoscopy. Now, initially we have to do a chest x-ray or CT to have a, an idea about the disease. Then pre-procedure fasting, it is 6 hours for solids and 2 to 3 hours of liquids. The antibiotic prophylaxis is however uh, strongly recommended in patients with risk factors for infection including asplenia, prosthetic heart valves and previous endocarditis. Now anticoagulants. All anticoagulants should be stopped at least 3 days before the procedure and normalization of the coagulation profile confirmed prior to the procedure. Aspirin and in particular clopidogrel should be discontinued at least 1 week prior to the procedure. If there are possible significant cardiologic contraindications to doing this, for instance, in case of a drug eluting stent, these should be discussed with a cardiologist. Now over to the positioning. The patient is most commonly positioned in the lateral decubitus position with the side to be examined uppermost. 
The patient's head is rested on a pillow with the hands positioned in front of the face. The position is comfortable and allows clear access to both the thoracic wall and the intravenous cannula. A pillow placed under the patient's chest helps to spread the contralateral lips, making it easier to insert the trochair and cannula. Now, the skin preparation. The skin over the whole hemithorax of the side to be examined should be prepared with an alcohol-based skin sterilizing solution. The skin preparation should include the axilla. Now over to the sedation. Rapidly acting intravenous benzodiazepine, example midazolam, 1 to 5 mg can be administered in small doses immediately before or during the procedure and titrated according to the patient's response. Some may use a second intravenous agent such as fentanyl 50 to 100 micrograms or alfentanyl 100 to 500 micrograms. This is all according to the British Thoracic Society Plural Disease Guideline 2010. Now, local anesthesia. The recommended site of local anesthesia and chest entry is the fourth or fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line within the safe triangle. Local anesthesia is induced at the selected site of the procedure using up to 20 ml of lidocaine which is 0.5 to 1%. The dose of infiltrated lidocaine should not exceed more than 3 mg per kg body weight as it can be toxic. Insertion of trocar or introducer. A 1 cm skin incision is made, blunt dissection with round ended scissors or blunt dissecting forceps. After this a 7 mm trocar or introducer port should be gently eased into the pleural cavity the pleural fluid should be aspirated with soft suction catheter. In the case of large pleural effusions, around 1.5 to 3 liters of pleural fluid may be removed one to, day, one to two days prior to the procedure. Safe thoracoscopy requires a large pleural cavity between the lung and the wall and therefore sometimes a partial pneumothorax have to be created. Examination of the pleural cavity should be systematic. One method is to start at the apex and then examine in succession the coastal pleura, diaphragm and finally the mediastinal pleura ending back at the apex. Biopsy should only be taken from the parietal pleura. Biopsies from sites overlying the upper border of the front of a rib than from the intercostal space reduces the risk of hemorrhage. Typically 2-6 to six biopsies can be taken. Some European medic medical thoracoscopists recommend taking 10 to 15 specimens. Now, one of the very useful thing about thoracoscopy is we can do talc putridge directly. Various delivery devices are available such as a talc spray atomizer, bulb syringe and spray catheter, the pictures of which are shown here. These, this is introduced through the working channel of the flexible rigid pleuroscope. The sclerosins used for chemical pleurodesis. Tetracycline can be used, talc slurry, bleomycin, doxycycline and minocycline. But during a pleuroscopy, we usually use talc, 2 to 5 grams, which has a success rate of more than 90%. The side effects are chest pain and fever. Now over to complications of the thoracoscopy. It is one of the safest procedure as per the 2010 BTS Plural Disease Guideline, as it reported only an overall mortality of 0.34%. Therapeutic MT with talc putridge gives a mortality rate of 0.69%. Prevention of complications can be done by postponing the thoracoscopy for several days if the patient is coughing, by measuring blood gases and monitoring cardiac status by simultaneous ECG, oxygenate the patient during thoracoscopy and avoid taking biopsy samples from internal parts of the fissures or from the mediastinum. Thank you.